Hey, welcome to the channel, Scotch Garage HTX. Don't forget the HTX. Well, it has been a busy week. I had relatives come in town. They parked the Mini Winnie right there in the driveway. My wife wanted some filming done for instructional videos on her horse, and the car count at the shop is going through the roof. But I have got to do some things on this cart, some maintenance items. One, change the oil. I know. Oh, how exciting. Changing the oil on your little toy race cart, Scott. Watch what I have to go through to get 40 cc's of oil out of this crankcase and back into it. It's absurd. Let's get started. I've already removed the air box from the front of the engine. That's really just to give me better access to the front of the engine and to the drain plug that's located at the bottom of the crankcase right here. I've also stuffed a towel underneath that drain plug hole because when oil comes out of there, it basically goes everywhere. You can't really put a pail underneath of it and catch it in one central location. So put a towel underneath there to catch it. It's 40 cc's of oil. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the strut bar that goes from this fiberglass seat to this axle so I have better access to the fill plug that's on top of the crankcase. You know, it's kind of comical how this unfolds, so just watch how it goes. It's, it's a 10 millimeter bolt on the top of this strut bar. Taking that off, I believe it's a 13 millimeter on the bottom bolt. Now I have some zip ties on this for some of these uh, exhaust temp sensors. Oh, bummer. So I forgot. I've got to take off the chain guard, which is not that big of a deal. Because I've got to hold this bolt to get the other bolt off. And we'll just set that aside right there. That'll give me better access to that plug. Now it's a 14 millimeter drain plug that we need to take out. Okay, we're just gonna set that aside. Now for silliness number one. You need to get all this oil out. And to do that, you have to, one, either tilt the engine and let all that oil go out of the drain plug, which I am not gonna take this engine out just to get 40 cc's of oil out of the crankcase, nor am I gonna pick the back end of it and hold it for a half an hour. What I am gonna do is put a rubber hose on the fill plug because it's vented and I am going to blow into the crankcase and get the rest of the oil out of there. Which should be relatively easy. Looks like it's all come out. I can go on to the next start which is trying to fill this, which is silliness number two. I put the drain plug back in, no big deal. It's 11 millimeter wrench to get the fill plug out at the top of the crankcase. And you say, well, just get a little funnel, put 40 cc's of oil in that funnel, and let it drain down the tube. <laughs> no, 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 it's not gonna be that simple. There is a bolt in the passageway between the top of the fill plug hole and the bottom of the crankcase, uh, making that opening even smaller than it already is. And my limited knowledge of physics is that the weight of 40 cc's of oil is not heavy enough to displace the air in the crankcase to go back up the fill tube, past that little opening, and go into the crankcase. So what's the solution? William Sonoma or a good kitchen store and a, I guess this is a meat tenderizer injector and it even has CCs and you put 40 CCs of oil into this 
and inject it down the hole slowly because if you do it quick it's going to come right back out at you into the crankcase. Silliness number two. I've got 40 cc's of oil in here that's about 1.35 fluid ounces and I am going to glasses slowly put that through the fill tube. Yeah wish me luck. It, it just takes patience quite honestly. Okay, we're, we're just finishing this up. It's, it's almost full. It's taken like five minutes just to slowly get this to go down that hole. I put everything back together. Chain guards back on, struts back on, air boxes back on. There's one other thing I want to do before I start it. I've been meaning to do this. It's supposed to give me a little bit more power, so to they say. I want to take off this exhaust which the exhaust port and i'm going to move this over here so you can see this exhaust ports on this side of this travel right here right here but the theory is that exhaust comes out out of here down through here bounces off about right here and then ricochets back out to this direction on this side of the travel but my exhaust is over on this side of the travel. So what I want to do is just twist it over here. I believe the way I do that is to take, and let me set this back down, this off right here that's held together by springs and just twist it and put it back together. You'll notice I've got zip ties on these springs because these springs at 15,000 to 16,000 RPMs vibrate so bad, bad they just pop off. I, I've lost like three or four of them. And then I learned a trick. You zip tie them together like this, just loosely, doesn't have to be very tight. I haven't lost a spring since I've done this zip tying. Well, you know. Anyway, we're gonna get started on that. And take these off. One by one. All right, I bet you anything that's not gonna be fun to put back on. But, there it is. That should be what I want, right? Align that so those are lined up. All right, I used blue before. Might as well just stick with tradition. There we go. Let's see if I get one to two more horsepower. Yeah, we'll see. Let's start her up, see what we got. If you're wondering what this thing runs off of, I use VP Racing Fuel. It's 98 octane, leaded, and I dump a bottle of that per every five gallons. So, see what happens. has fallen out of the bottom of the engine yet, so maybe we were good. I would turn this off because I'm sure this is pissing the neighbors off. Success. Thanks for being with me. This Friday, it's Wednesday. This Friday, I'm supposed to race the GNX. Organizing everything, it's got a lot of players involved in it. Hopefully by next episode, I have that GNX and the TTA going down the drag strip. Thanks for joining me.